Ladies and gentlemen, I want to give out the phone number and get your take on the amnesty plan they're preparing. Uh, evidence indicating Michael Hastings of Rolling Stone that had a big story coming out that was supposedly going to shake the CIA. So his car blew up driving down the street. Witnesses said it was an explosion. The engine went over 50 yards down the street with no fire. Looks like classic car bomb in the dashboard or, or under the car, bare minimum, type explosion. He said, the FBI's after me. The FBI's following me an hour and a half before in a tweet and uh, two WikiLeaks. So, I mean, uh, you're being followed. The feds are after you. Your car blows up. And you've got all these other people, like the Zarnev uh, brother friend who was speaking out. And the, the FBI comes to his house, shoots him in the top of the head. He's unarmed. Uh, Pat Tillman, the list goes on and on. Uh, Aaron Schwartz. Uh, said, I'm going to beat this these fake Justice Department charges. I'm getting married. Uh, they come to his house and hang him. And then say, we drove him to suicide. The D.C. madam said on this show a month before they hung her in her mother's shed, I will never commit suicide. I will never commit suicide. Uh, and then some guy that was proven she didn't even know on the other side of the country comes out and says, she told me she was with no proof. So if they kill me like that, they'll have someone pop up and say, Alex said he was going to do it. Whoever says that is a liar. Is a liar. They could have a gun to my head saying they'd come after my children if I didn't write a suicide note. I'm not writing nothing. You understand? And I'm never committing suicide. I want that on record. And again, they also haven't killed me yet because they know my media organization is going to come after this investigation and is going to go after it 110%, and no one's going to shut up or stop. We know they're doing the NDAA. That's why Obama wanted, on paper, to be able to say he could kill U.S. citizens anytime he wanted inside of the United States or worldwide. And But, oh, but we won't use it. They are using it. Michael Hastings, award-winning journalist and BuzzFeed reporter, dies at 33. It appears he was driving at a high rate of speed at the scene of the crash. There were no skid marks. The car is not smashed up against a tree consistent with what's said. It's just up against one, and the engine is down the road. Yeah, no, they, they blew the car off. And uh, you know, there it is in ABC Local that there's no skid marks. It's just blown into pieces with the engine down the road. People said they heard a huge explosion and saw it burst into flames driving down the road. And we covered all that last hour. It's in Paul Watson's article on Infowars.com right now. Here's some of the other news up on Infowars.com. <clears throat> Sheeple waking up to NSA spying. Privacy search engine. Engines are booming. NSA capable of false flag attacks by Kit Daniels. They're the ones wired into everything. Evidence indicates Michael Hastings was assassinated. Superman goes bad, joins the NSA. It's a satire piece. Uh, got some great graphics in it that our crew put together, by the way, of Superman looking through walls and things. Uh, tell TSA what you think about its surface mode, Gestapo, yeah, now on the streets of America. Uh, cancer survivor wins Supreme Court battle over gene patenting. Uh, the dark side of Ray Kurzweil's transhumanist utopia. And then there's Kurt Nimmo's article from last night. Is journalist Michael Hastings a victim of Obama assassination policy? That's some of the news up on Infowars.com. Uh, let's play a clip from ABC News Local in L.A. Uh, talking about Michael Hastings and talking to witnesses about what they saw and what they heard. Here it is. Rolling Stone magazine called Michael Hastings a fearless journalist who refused to cozy up to power. His death at 33 came by way of a fire-fueled and explosive crash. It sounded like a bomb went off in the middle of the night. My house shook. The windows were rattling. Couldn't have written a scene like this for a movie where the engine flies from the car, which was about, I don't know, 50, 60 yards up, right down here to this telephone pole. Ladies and gentlemen, he could be going 150 miles an hour. I've seen a lot of wrecks, especially in a Mercedes, the way they're built. You're not going to have the engine fly down the road. I mean, they could blow up anybody. And people are just told, oh, it just ran into a tree. And then you look, it's been blown off the road, and it's up against a tree. Not, not sandwiched up against it, not, not an indent from it. It's just setting up against a tree. 
Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I'd say 95, 98% chance they killed this guy. And he says, I'm being followed by the FBI. I've got a big thing coming out that could blow the CIA wide open. And they said, really? Think so, bud? We got something that's going to blow you wide open. And who founded the CIA? OSS, British Intelligence, and Skull and Bones at Yale, which was set up by the British East India Company in 1832 under the Russell Trust, who had the world monopoly on opium into the West, and who then lobbied to get opium made illegal so they could shut down all their competition in the 1930s. The CIA has always been there to bring the drugs in. The CIA has always been there for the robber barons. People started fighting the robber barons in the 1850s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, right through the 20s. The robber barons would just show up with a railroad train full of Pinkerton security and others. And they, it's just like in... What movie is that with uh, Clint Eastwood? Toll-free number to join us, folks. 800-259-9231. 800-259-9231. And we'll, we'll start going to your phone calls here in a moment. My point is, is that uh, it's not High Plains Drifter, but it's kind of a remake of it where Eastwood goes to the mining town and they want the people to give up their claim where they found gold. The railroad does with the big miner company. And then they send in the uh, detectives to start killing people. Folks, those are true stories. There were hundreds of events like that in Colorado, you name it, uh, but also in New Jersey and places where they would show up with the army or they would show up with hundreds of Pinkerton or other security guys and just start Gatling gunning towns, just taking property that wasn't even theirs. And people started arming. They called them Sagebrush Rebellion, started killing them. People started beating the army, beating Pinkerton. People started organizing, going, you want to start killing? Let's start killing. And people would also find out who the Pinkerton people's family were and other groups, and they'd go to another state and kill them. Not their family, but the people that ran it. Frontier people started you know, going, you, what, you want to hit us? We'll hit you right back. So it all went underground in national security. And then we say, America doesn't kill people. It's like in The Godfather, where uh, Kay says to... Uh, Michael Corleone, Corleone says to him, you know, okay, my dad has people killed sometimes. You know, that's what presidents and senators do. And she goes, Michael, presidents and senators don't have people killed. And he goes, who's being naive now? Okay. And see, the argument is, and it's really true, because the Godfather's based on real mafia families, real names, they just changed them. That's on record. Mario Puzo. It's got all the main characters in it uh, who were who, who real people. And when you expand on all of this, the argument is, is, well, the old mafia just stood up when the police were uh, their own mafia. They would stand up for you. But then notice how that mafia turned into something just as bad or worse. And that's how this gang society operates. And pretty soon, that's all you've got left. Pretty soon, all you've got left is gangs. And then what gang are you in? And then gangs tend to stop working. And everybody joins a gang and then society collapses or they go out and grab the peasants and put them in slave camps to produce for them. But then slave camps aren't very productive. So it, it gets to the point where even the heads of the countries can't even get good food or good clothing like North Korea. And, and, and they will wreck everything if they have their way. They will wreck everything because why shouldn't big corporations, if they have a mafia government, why shouldn't General Electric give every year on average over a hundred million dollars uh, to the democratic party they also give the republican to have them come in and shut down every power plant they don't own and then double and triple your prices why shouldn't they why shouldn't we have rolling blackouts now all over the country because we don't have enough infrastructure why shouldn't they shut down our factories and and, ha and pay 20 plus billion dollars of taxpayer money to move general motors volt cadillac you name it to china so they can have robots replace the people and have the people go die in the streets starving to death. 
not even helping the Chinese. I mean, why not? We'll put up with it. Why not? Because they have disdain for us. You look at Rahm Emanuel, who was the real president, till he got, a, got kicked out by some other insiders because he was so arrogant and so mentally ill, reportedly, and sent to be the mob boss in Chicago, where I'm sure he can listen on 1530. He routinely, at Democratic Party events, grabs butcher knives and starts going, ah, ah, just stabbing the table and foaming at the mouth, going, murder everyone, murder, murder the Republicans, murder, murder. And he'll be in meetings with Obama and just go, shut up. And literally, you know, just slap Obama on the arm. Just start stumbling around on a power trip. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, this is what runs America. And then he gets up on TV and goes, we're going to have national conscription. Your kids are going to serve in a domestic armed force in America working for us. I mean, just crazy mafia. Just, your kids work for us. We're going to arm them. <laughs> and, and, and then you get the training manuals, and it's to fight gun owners. I mean, these are just... Joe Stalin wrapped in Hitler, wrapped in, wrapped in uh, you know, the gangsters of old. But now they've got satellites and drones and robots and weapons, and they're just running around with jets landing, all the kidnapped kids on record, loading them up in Chicago, in Houston. They fly them out to Saudi Arabia, Thailand. Local cops try to expose it. They kill the cops. I mean, they just, you want to know where your kids are going? It's going to these people. I mean, <laughs> Why not? You put up with it. I'm telling you, folks, you got to stand up against these people. They're a bunch of knuckle dragon gangsters. The important thing about the Pro One filter today is that the material we use for removing fluoride and other heavy metals now will remove the latest form of fluoride called hydrofluorosilicic acid. There's no other fluoride reduction filter out there that will remove that type of fluoride. And it's extremely important because today we're hearing more and more cities are using that form of fluoride. We've been having medication forced on us through the water system for quite a while. Most people don't realize it. Most people don't realize the negative effects of fluoride. There's a wide range of health effects that are attributed to fluoride. Bottom line, why should somebody get this new Pro One Pro Pure filter? The reason to buy the Pro One, it's an all-in-one filter. It's convenient, easy to use. It doesn't require the add-on fluoride filter. And in addition, this filter removes the latest form of fluoride called hydrofluorosilicic acid. your slaves. Well, we act like a bunch of not need cowards. The wolves will come. You go out in the field at night and squeal like a dying bunny rabbit. Good chance coyotes are going to come over the hill. And if you roll over on your back and act like you're a prey, they might actually kill you. Coyotes are now killing Americans routinely. Never before happened in recorded history. Only wolves would do that if starving, but People fall down groveling and crying when they see them in a park. They think, well, that's something to eat. And the American people act like a prey animal. And so we're growing predators faster than you can count them. Uh, and they, they tell us how they're doing it for our safety. I'm going to go to your phone calls, but up on Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com, Superman Goes Bad joins the NSA. And I like to hijack popular memes to then illustrate that, you know, he has x-ray vision. He's looking through the looking through the building there at the lady in the shower. It's, it's not a risque photo. It just illustrates that actually with Connect systems and smart meters, a Connect can look through your walls and see you in the shower. We should probably add that to the write-up there. But uh, Don Salazar heard me talk about this yesterday and put it out, and our great graphics crew came up with that uh, graphic. They did some others, I guess, they put on the cutting room floor, but they ought to add those to it. And I'm going to send that out on Twitter at Real Alex Jones uh, as well right now. Uh, but right now, speaking of right now, let's go to Truth Raider uh, in Oregon. You're on the air. Good afternoon, Alex Jones and all the info warriors out there in the world. This is the Truth Raider. Get it in your face with the facts. You were talking about amnesty and talking about the borders being wide open. I uh, have an issue with a next-door neighbor. I completely don't want to you know, have any contact with them. I leave them alone. I go out my back door to avoid, avoid them completely. I went out last night to go up to the store, get something to eat. The guy's on the other side of the street heckling me. 
and he's whistling at me. So I ignore him. I come back, go around the other side of the, of, of the building on the other side of the street. He's on the other side of the street ready to confront me. They say, hey, what's up? What's up? And I say, I, you know, I don't want to talk to you. Oh, and then he starts, he starts cussing at me. So I, <laughs> well, that's what you're doing to me and doing to all of us. I told him I paid $4,000 and moved 1,000 miles to get away from you. I went into one of my Alex Jones rants with him. Oh, I'll, I'll call the police. I called the police. Well, well you're talking about a, 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 an illegal alien that you think doesn't like you because you're a different skin color? Well, I think that he knows that I'm trying to, uh, to avoid them. When I first moved into my apartment here, I tried to be friendly. I said, hello, how are you? And he, and he just gave me a dirty look. Well, I, got, I mean, I haven't had problems with, with the illegals, whether they be from Mexico or Eastern Europe or whatever. My issue is is that they tend to vote anti-gun, pro-government, pro-corrupt government, pro-mafia, pro because that's the cultures they're coming from. Most countries are mafia-driven. America's been mafia-driven, gang-driven. We're trying to get away from that and not supercharge it. But, I, you know, I think that um, I haven't had the experiences you're talking about uh, my experiences with the illegals that make me mad is they're like above the law. We have, you know, crew that live in apartments, some of them, and the illegals are allowed to do whatever they want. But citizens, whether you be white, black, Hispanic, whatever, get the book thrown at you. So I think being in the system, we're seen as chumps by the mafia government, the mafia police. And my issue is, um, but so, I mean, you're saying you've had experiences, xenophobic experiences towards you because you're, uh, you're not the, the same as an immigrant group or what? I'm an American. I've been in the military. I'm former retired military. You know, I fought for the sovereignty and the freedom of this country, and it's being eviscerated. The, the Constitution and all the due process is being eviscerated. I'm not happy about that. I left California to get away from what's all that's going on down there. I mean, the, you know, all the host of all the issues concerning illegal aliens, the gangsters, the gang culture, the, the crime along the border, all of that stuff. Trouble with a, a relative of mine, a, an elderly um, my, my stepmother, who had lots of pr troubles with them for years, they, they did damage to her property, broke into her place for years. No, there's no doubt that there's a crime wave coming out of Mexico, and you're, you're supposed to be politically correct and not talk about it. I mean, Mexico is a collapsed, failed state, and um, uh, obviously then people think they're not liked, and then you think you're not liked, and the body language intensifies that. Uh, and I have run into the whole gang culture. And, and, and again, you find the gang culture everywhere. You know, I, I've got family in East Texas, and I've worked there and been there in the summer. And, you know, had people come over at the community pool and say, get out of here, you Yankee, because anybody from Dallas must be a Yankee. Uh, but I hear you. And it's just exactly the gang mentality I'm talking about. And the gang mentality has a way of putting you into it, even if you don't want to be what they call racist. It's really gang or tribal. And if you look at Latin America, Africa, Europe, whatever, you'd have one group of Scots killing the other group of Scots until the English invaded and then they'd unify. And in Africa, you'll have animus killing Christians or Muslims killing Christians or vice versa. And it's, it's just what humans do. And the globalists manipulate and play that. I'd rather have a gang that's into science and liberty and freedom and justice and unify around those ideals. Now you can watch Alex Jones live at Infowars.com forward slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. You can also browse the network, the Infowars Nightly News, and over 60 movies and documentaries all together in one place. You can watch the Alex Jones Radio Show live as it happened. So check it out, Infowars.com forward slash show. question is, is the establishment flaunting it on purpose that the private Federal Reserve's collection agency, the IRS, is targeting liberty lovers? Are they throwing it in our face that they're assassinating American citizens all over the world for no reason? Are they throwing it in their, our face that foreign banks are taking $85 billion a month and Congress is told to sit down and shut up and not ask who's getting it? I think the answer is yes. The globalists just can't help but steal everything. Nobody's stopping them. And so they have a method of the madness of just pimp us, break our will, teach us to accept it as we convert to a society of just groveling idiots who worship nothing but hype and uh, foolishness. And, and any reporters that expose them or, 
you know, actually uh, show the criminality they're engaged in, you just kill them. And that's the future we leave our children. Now, continuing here, ladies and gentlemen, I want to tell you about some of the sponsors that make the broadcast possible and that just have amazing products. We only carry what we believe in. InfidelBodyArmor.com has a huge line of products, and their body armor is superior. Most chromatic uh, only stops six rounds. Their system can stop hundreds of AK-47, M4, 30-06, 308, and more. Um, related to Level 3 Body Armor, they've got it all. Fits medium to XXL, 888-608-6605, infidelbodyarmor.com, 888-608-6605. And supporting our sponsors supports the broadcast, either full catalog online, or you can also call them and have a mail you one for infidelbodyarmor.com. Uh, also, efoodsdirect.com forward slash Alex. That is where you will uh, find all of the specials. And I don't have a phone number in this folder, so maybe we'll put efoodsdirect.com forward slash Alex uh, up on screen. I can give the number out that way. Um, but uh, again, ladies and gentlemen, efoodsdirect.com forward slash Alex, uh, or you can simply give them a call toll free, 800-409-5633, 800-409-5633. They've got a lot of specials uh, going up there at, at efoodsdirect.com forward slash Alex or 800 409 5633. And then in closing here with the uh, plugs, the new film State of Mind. I'm in it. It's excellent. It exposes the history, the present, and the future of mind control. It'll really wake up sheeple that there is a war on for their mind, and knowing is half the battle. That's not a G.I. Joe saying, that's an old uh, military U.S. Army saying. Uh, and then you can get uh, the American Dream film on the Federal Reserve. It's very powerful. It exposes the Rothschilds and Rockefellers free when you get this film on uh, DVD or Blu-ray. Uh, are we controlled? To what extent and by whom? And what does it mean for humanity's future? State of mind available right now at InfoWarsStore.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and go to Rod in France. Uh, you're on the air, Rod. Hello, Alex. So good to talk to you again. Um, wanted to uh, to ask you your opinion on um, on the elections that will be coming up. As you know, there will not be an incumbent for the presidency, and it's I, I don't know what what you think, but it's for me. It's looking like Rand Paul is going to be a, a serious candidate if he decides to run. Um, and I was wondering. I had heard you uh, mention something about. Uh, about the electronic voting and maybe, you know, the global have their hands in that, possibly. And if uh, it came down to the wire and Rand Paul, hypothetically, if Rand Paul was uh, in the running for the presidency and uh, and it was close, and uh, do you think uh, that... that uh, that uh, they could play around with the with the electronic uh, voting, and and if he did make it in, do you think that it's possible that someone would try to take him out because he doesn't have a globalist agenda? Well, just to be clear, and I appreciate your call. It's a great question. Just to be clear, we get sixty percent turnouts or close to it. It's like fifty-seven percent is the average. I think in the last four elections, I saw that a few months back in the newspaper. But it's around. 60% turnout in national presidential elections and about 45, 50% off your elections. And then on average, you get about 8% turnout locally in the country. Travis County happens to be right at the national average, I think 8.4% last time I saw the numbers where I live. And in places like Travis County, I've been to the election board at the state. They've certified election fraud, but they still rubber stamp it. There is no voting in Austin. And that's why it's so fraudulent and socialist and communist and globalist and insiders robbing everybody and uh, taking people's private property and, and out of control zoning boards and, and just hell on earth uh, because they have been proven over and over again to steal elections. They've had county commissioner elections where somebody's 20 something points ahead and then the uh, county commissioner who's friends with the county clerk is in the paper, throws fits and collapses. And then the county clerk says, it's okay, hun, I'll make it better. And then the, suddenly they win. I mean, it's just, they don't even hide it. It's, it's kind of like, 
you know, the CIA publicly brings in the drugs or they publicly killed Pat Tillman and it comes out and they don't get in trouble. I mean, it is just lawless evil. 35, 40 percent of the country's got certified fraud systems in. And if you're voting the way they want, they'll they'll let you actually have it. They, 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 they've been caught all over the country, diebold all of them. They have pre-programmed algorithms. They have live feeds in the programs to go in, change the votes, and then have it covered up for them. And, and that's on record. That's been testified in Florida legislature, Ohio, Texas. It's well known. Just like it's well known the NSA spies on you without warrants. Just like it's well known they put cancer viruses in all the major vaccines. Just like it's well known sodium fluoride lowers your IQ around 20 points, gives you seven-fold increase in bone cancer. I keep going for a couple hours. It's just all well known. It's a well known to people that know how to tie their shoelaces. Uh, and so, if from the experts we've talked to, like Bev Harris and many others, I knew the Collier brothers before they died and their daughter and all of them, who first really exposed it 30, 40 years ago, they have trouble fixing big, massive landslides. But they could still do that. So that's why they're so arrogant. That's why they pass the NDAA and say, we'll kill you if we want. That's why they run the narcotics. That's why they take over a million kids every year. Why state and federal courts are ruling they can take your kids for no reason. That was in the news yesterday. This is how tyranny works. They've got a group, an army of criminals, an army of scum, an army of control freaks who will do whatever they're told or they'll be replaced. And they're marching against us. And they're stealing and robbing and destroying everything. And they will accelerate it until everything is destroyed and sewage is running down the streets and you are completely poor. They will destroy health care. They will destroy our borders. They will rob everything. It's what they do unless we stand up to them and just basically we've eaten poison. We're going to get very sick if we don't vomit the poison out. And we may not make it even if we were to vomit it all out now. So much of it's in the bloodstream. And, and this is how society dies. And people want to die. And, and, you know, and in a way, we've killed 53 million babies in America and say they're not humans. Well, you're not human either. And you let them go kill Iraqis and take everything they've got, so the bankers will take everything you've got. That's how it works. It's a spiritual law of the universe. It's a law of quantum mechanics. It's a law of physics. That what comes around goes around. That's why you have empathy. I don't need to cold-bloodedly say I'm against killing Iraqis, you know, over a million of them, just so globalists make money, because it'll come back on me. I have empathy. I'm hardwired to not like it. In my gut, in my spirit. But that hardwiring is also there as a survival mechanism. And people think not caring is tough. They're going to find out. No one is immune. No one is immune. Everyone will drink from this cup. And there's not going to be a big fake rapture. The Bible doesn't say that up front to get us out of all this. We're going to go through it. So I hope everybody gets that through the, their heads. Okay? You want excitement, folks, you're going to get it. But people are so brainwashed, they won't even know. People think they're bored. You're bored? You're living in the middle of a science fiction movie. They're blowing up Rolling Stones reporters on the streets of L.A. in car bombs. They burn down police officers in cabins. Who knows if Dorner even did what they said and then say, we burned him up, but we didn't burn him up. They just do whatever they want. Let's go to, so I, I don't know about Rand Paul. Rand Paul's good because he puts out liberty-based ideas and criticizes tyranny. Scott in Vermont, you're on the air. Yeah, hi, Alex. Yeah, you won't you won't see. Um, I don't think you'll see Matt Taibbi of uh, Rolling Stone talking about conspiracies regarding uh, Hastings. But, anyways, uh, I want to bring up. Um, As everybody knows, the U.S. government doesn't kill anybody. I want to bring up um, uh, General Ben Parton. He was so great on the uh, Oklahoma bombing uh, years ago, exposing the truth about that. He was a, he's a bomb expert um, and at Flight 800. And uh, but the thing is, um, and he's and he's on the film A Noble Lie, which is great. Uh, I don't know if you've had him on your show, but uh, and you've probably been asked this before. I've been meaning to ask. I've you had Parton on many times. Get Ben Parton on. If you guys don't have his number in the computer, he's been on twenty times over the years. Had been on in about five years. Former head of Air Force Weapons Development. Former head of HARP. Um, I want him on, uh, and you can call the Noble Lie guys to get his number if you don't have it. 
Yeah, Thank Alex, you. he had the very missile that he said, the continuous rod warhead missile that he says took down Flight 800. No, I know. Why, I mean, they, they, they had, and reporters heard him. They, they, they broke in, got the samples. It was U.S. government explosive used in that missile, so they arrested them. And, and, and where was the media when that happened? No, they blew that up because it was full of Egyptian military officers. Why has he never talked about 9-11? You know, right. I talked to him after 9-11, and he just said, I'm not going there. Going there, huh? Well, maybe sometime before he, uh, <laughs> maybe, uh, you yeah, know, worried about it, but I wish he would. But, uh, you know, the media said yesterday that uh, conspiracy, you know, they brought out this new story about these researchers on the original investigators now coming out, now that they're retired, uh, got their pensions, uh, coming out and saying that there was a cover-up. Um, they said, that, you know, conspiracy theorists have long thought there was a sinister uh, a plot there. No, we, we were talking about, uh, they, were, they were talking about an accident and the Navy, and, and it's come out for the from people that were on the inside who told their family. I know somebody who knows yeah, somebody. It, it wasn't Navy. an accident. They, they routed the aircraft over the drill to get rid of the Egyptians. They blew it up. It had a bunch of other military officers on it as well. Boy, and all those kids. They blow up school. aircraft full of military all the time. All I don't know why these governments fly a bunch of top generals together on the same aircraft. In Pennsylvania that were uh, learning French and going over to France there, and they died too. Well, that's too bad, Alex, but uh, I, I, we got we to gotta expose that and everything else too, and, and, and don't worry about them calling us conspiracy theorists or whatever, because <laughs> a lot of it's true. Notice this is all coming out now, though. All these scandals that were already there, you know, it's not that Snowden isn't a hero, and I think he's a real person, it's that they knew months before, and Washington Post and Guardian were sitting on it. And then they got the green light to go with it because Benghazi will bring them down. They had two drones and other aircraft with high-def video of the six-plus-hour stand-down. And they, they had those people murdered using the Al-Qaeda security force over Benghazi. And this wakes up the mafia. Who themselves are, I mean, these guys sit around. I have, I have sat around with old army black ops operators and people, and they're all the same. They've got, they've got literal paintings of you know, Western characters uh, on the wall. They read Louis L'Amour books. John Wayne's on the wall. And they just absolutely think we're America, we're the tough guys, we kill everybody, and we use evil tactics because we're protecting the good. And this whole thing of publicly running Al-Qaeda has really freaked the military out. I mean, like, it's like half the military, 40 to 50 percent now, of the, of the non-commissioned officers and below are my listeners. That freaks out the system. To the point of they're saying the military is the enemy. And you've got all these guys that have done all this bad stuff, but they believe in justifies the means. They're now all getting it. Something like Benghazi could bring them down. Because their own hitmen, believe me, folks, the army doesn't just go fight battles. They go around killing people 24-7 all over the world. And it's mainly the army. That's why whenever Pachinik comes in and goes, the SEALs like to brag about what they do. That's kind of a public unit for PR for the Navy. The Army doesn't talk about what they do. And the Army doesn't like it being talked about either, Alex. Because it is. The Army is just, from my research, is just giant, giant. I mean, just huge secret armies of hitmen and, and, and saboteurs and just everything else. It's just mind-blowing. And the armies, like, you sat there and killed all these people, and they all know, and hundreds of people are in situation rooms watching this. So Benghazi's what they're really afraid of, ladies and gentlemen. Benghazi is what they're afraid of. Because you've got all these guys that think they've done all this stuff for John Wayne and for to fight the commies and all this stuff. And now they see the country being destroyed, everything being devalued. They're being told they're the new enemy. Yeah, because they're done with you guys now. They're done. They're going to bring in the drones, the robots. They're going to bring in Interpol. They're going to bring in foreign hit teams now. They're done with you. Not of the long knives. And if you guys don't know what that is, you better look it up. They're done with you. you you're the SA that helped bring Hitler to power, and now you're going to get knives shoved into your gullets. Okay? They're going to take you, and they're going to kill you, and they're going to poison you, and they're going to slit your throats, and they're going to kill you. Okay, so go ahead and go kill innocent people and bring drugs in and load little kids on C-130s. Just remember, you're all dead too.
Now you can watch The Alex Jones Show live as it happens at Infowars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at Infowars.com slash show. I was listening to Two Minutes to Midnight, the anti-abortion song, driving into work this morning. That's very satanic. Um... A lot of those bands they say are satanic are actually the opposite. They're trying to get you to look at what's going on, to be aware of it. The real devil comes disguised as an angel of light. By the way, Kurt Nemo just posted some breaking news, uh, and this is, this is confirmed. Uh, Michael Hastings assassinated for work uncovering surveillance state. The journalist Michael, uh, Michael Hastings, who died in what authorities have described as a high-speed car crash, was an active member of Project PM, a crowdsourcing research effort to expose government intelligence creators. Yeah, the big anonymous group has come out uh, and said that they're going to uh, investigate him being murdered. So anonymous knows what's going on. And we've got that article up on Infowars.com. Uh, the uh, login screen for Trapwire, software used for intelligence gathering on U.S. and global citizens, and made public in WikiLeaks data stamp, data dump. Uh, and they've uh, gone public with the fact that he was working on trap wire with them. And he did have the FBI, quote, following him when his car blew up. <laughs> Just how much more obvious does this get? And we told you they killed Pat Tillman. And it came out that old McChrystal uh, was over that cover up. And I'm sure over more than that. And it did turn out he was murdered. And uh, who did Michael Hastings burn? McChrystal, the head of Army Special Operations. That... That's as gangster as it gets. By the way, we have another former head of special operations who said he wanted to come on the show, and I just got so busy, I never even called him up. That's how pathetic I am. Uh, and uh, a lot of security concerns, though, uh, that the person has to go through every day. Uh, I mean, th th these guys are living in prisons, basically. What a, what a, what a horrible world. I mean... The, the most insecure thing you could ever be part of is a tyranny. We've taken a free, open society that wasn't perfect, but that was not one-tenth as corrupt, and we have just absolutely burned up our republic. We have pitted it out. We have wrecked it. And what is the establishment doing? They're accelerating down the black hole. <sighs> I've studied history, folks. I mean, the road we're going down is horrible. Horrible. It will destroy productivity. It will destroy uh, our society. And it's going the way it always does. It's accelerating now. Like you've seen the corruption in the last 50 years intensify. It's going to get more corrupt in the next five than it has the last 50. Then it'll get corrupt in the next year after that than in the previous five. It's like a singularity of, of, of evil. A singularity of just orgies of corruption as psychopaths try to get caught and just act out and dominate more and more. This is the criminology, this is the psychology of them. They will destroy themselves because even though they're evil and corrupt, their subconscious mind and their human hardwiring wants them to be destroyed. And they're going to destroy themselves with us right along with them. Not a very pretty picture, my friends. Not a pretty train we're on. We need to get off the train right now we need to turn this around right now as fast as we can many anthropologists and archaeologists believe that before man even discovered uh, the power to harness and use fire we were involved in agrarian activities that is taking the seeds of plants and then replanting them to produce more the very foundation of our modern civilization and human culture is centered around the planting and cultivation of edible plants, fruits, vegetables, nuts, you name it. And the globalists have been going after gardening. They've been harassing people that have gardens in their front yards or their backyards. They've called for licenses for people to have gardens because you can't trust prisoners in the police state America to be able to grow their own food. That's why I've come to the realization that we need to become self-sufficient. You need to be informed. You need to have the Second Amendment to protect yourself. You need to be politically active to wake up others. You need to filter your water. 
but you also need to plant a garden. Even if you live in an apartment, you can do this. If you live in the countryside, obviously you can do it on a grand scale. There are so many green belts in areas uh, that humans don't even visit uh, nearby cities and in suburbs where people are now more and more planting their own little private gardens and meadows and off the side of the road. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a revolutionary act to unplug from the television, to unplug from the computer and all the globalist propaganda and to go out in your backyard or your front yard or planters at your apartment or on the roof of the building where you live and to plant a garden. Here are some of the amazing deals at InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsShop.com. The Survival Seed Vault by My Patriot Supply features only the finest survival heirloom seeds for a robust and hardy garden, even in the toughest of times. The ARC All-in-One Seed Kit contains 70 varieties of 50,000 seeds of fruits, vegetables, medicinal, and culinary herbs. All ARC seeds are heirloom. Each type is labeled and sealed separately for ease of use and longevity. The Deluxe Emergency Seed Bank combines three of Emergency Seed Bank's top sellers. The Family Survival Emergency Seed Bank, the Medicinal Herb Seeds Pack, and the Culinary Herb Seeds Pack. We also have starter varieties of the Deluxe Seed Packages for fruit, salad, salsa, peppers, and medicinal herbs and more. Go to the InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsShop.com. A little seed can grow a huge tree that produces fruit for up to 50 years. We have the best life bombs. That's what these are. We have the best weapons against death out there at the lowest prices waiting for you to lovingly plant them and lovingly grow them and lovingly eat them and share them with others. We will strike back against the New World Order and this is only one more initiative in our fight against them. So please join us at InfoWarsShop.com or you can link through at InfoWars.com at the InfoWars Seed Center. Mouse Link in New York. You want to talk about Ray Kurzweil. Welcome to the airwaves. Hi, Alex. How are you today? I'm all right, brother. Hey, you know, um, I listen to you a lot, and I think that there's a lot of different ways that you could be described as a libertarian, as a constitutionalist, uh, a lot of different ways that you analyze reality. But uh, the way that I've never heard you described and the way that I'm really starting to come to think of you is as a futurist, maybe the dark futurist. But um, if you're following the futurism news and people like Kurzweil, I've seen Kurzweil speak. I attended the Singularity Summit down in New York City, um, and I read his book, uh, Fantastic Voyage. It, there's this futurism is very much kind of rosy. Um, you know, it's kind of saccharine rainbows. And when people get together and they talk about futurism, I don't feel like there's a lot of realistic discussion no they sell um, a dystopic uh transhumanist system that's really eugenics it's a prison they're on record in their more internal documents as a wonderful new thing and they're going to be gods and if you don't get with the program you'll be left behind and he's kind of the high priest of this new religion that they're selling to make it trendy i'm not even so much a futurist as i'm chronicling what the globalist social engineers are trying to build. Do you understand? I'm warning people. I sound like a futurist because what I talked about 18 years ago, a lot of it's come true because they're building it. I, th their blueprints are public. They change things a little bit as they try to uh, you accentuate it uh, over time and they tweak things. But I'm here watching an admitted program that they're trying to build. And it's basically an Elysium type world. Uh, and, and, and so, and there's a lot of people in the system warning the public. Uh, so I've talked to some of these directors, you know, off record, some of these big films and, and they're you know saying, Hey, look, we're awake. We're trying to warn people. This is not propaganda. And then I see it come out, uh, in some of these films and it's not, these people are awake. Uh, and, but, but they're only allowed to do it in a fiction form, which then, the, the, the higher level social engineers believe is just preparing everyone's mind. Uh, but yes, I think uh, that uh, people say, oh, Jones has a dystopic futurist view. They're, they're building this. I don't want to have them set my destiny and your destiny. We should have a debate about what do we want our destiny to be, uh, Mouse Link. Well, I totally agree with you. And I, don't, I think that the fact that you hammer this idea of normalcy bias a lot, I find that to be really useful 
when I'm talking to people about futurism stuff, we the world is changing. It's changing so rapidly, but we all keep acting like it isn't. Now you can watch the InfoWars nightly news streaming live as it happens for free. Check it out at InfoWars.com forward slash show. Monday through Friday, baby, we're here for three hours in the face of the global tyrants as they assassinate and murder people, openly ship in the drugs, give foreign banks 85 billion of our taxpayer money a month, and just in, are involved in every form of crime, we're desperately trying to get humanity off its knees and to stop worshiping illegitimate authority. The authority in this country is the Bill of Rights, the Constitution, the Declaration of Independence. That's what made this country great. What made all the other countries a bunch of knuckle-dragging third-world cesspits is the people were slaves and never had any freedom. Visit InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. When you're on the site, you can also tune in 24 hours a day to my daily radio broadcast. There's also a free iPhone app to listen to the syndicated radio show when and where you want.